Jesus says, Believe in your dreams. Heaven is only the start of your eternal life. October 14, 2015 Words from Jesus through Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Claire began, The Lord's very special anointing on belief and believing in your dreams is upon us, and he gave us a beautiful teaching on that. Jesus began, I want to talk about belief. Belief is different than trust. Belief presupposes a certain amount of latching onto the dream, holding on to the future promises I have given you. We have recently talked about counteracting anxiety with trust. With trust, it is a matter of letting go into my faithful arms. With belief, you grasp what has been revealed to you. You must keep a grip on it and tend to its nourishment. Like a seedling springing up from the ground, belief is yet another dynamic joining heaven and earth. Things have been written about you. Assignments, gifts and talents, destinies, crowns have been marked out for you, many of which have been spoken over you or placed in your hearts. When I inspire a direction in your life, it is so that you will cling to the vision through all the storms until you reach your destination. Lord, it seems a bit confusing to me. Belief is an active thing where trust is a surrendering of yourself and all that pertains to you in absolute faith, that I am in control and will make the best of it. They do in a sense overlap. I'm splitting hairs here because I want both dynamics at work in my brides. Each of you who have been shown visions of how I'm going to use you in the future have something to work towards as I lead you. Your active participation means grasping the vision and building on it as I lead you. And remember that I do write straight with crooked lines. Trust is more like knowing. No matter what happens, I'm still in control and I bring miracles out of ashes. Trust is a sustaining power of life. Belief is a dream catcher, a mission catcher, where you understand that you are being prepared for something in specific. And that's where I'm going with this. You, my brides, have proven yourselves faithful to my desires, my mandates, my character. You have been the good ground where the earth produced a hundredfold. And now that you have been faithful in the little things, I'm giving you greater things to do. You may still be in preparation for those things, but in my eyes they've been accomplished in heaven. For far too many of you, life ends in heaven. Nothing could be more untrue. Earth is a proving ground and heaven is not only a reward, but a step up higher to embrace even more responsibility, more gifts, more missions. Oh, how wonderful it will be for you who have learned to love your brother as yourself. The limitations of the past will be removed and a whole new world of tools and possibilities will open up to allow you to grow beyond your former capabilities. I want you to add here, with all your hearts, to the visions that have been spoken over you. Do not let your current circumstance on earth box you in, but hold to the vision and know that everything you need to accomplish, what is in your hearts, will be given you. Isn't that wonderful? Indeed it is, Lord. Wow, it's out of this world. 
Oh, why do I have to wait? And how much longer? Wow, my bride, I'm merely igniting new hope in your heart. It's not quite time yet. The transition will be a work in itself, believe me. I can only imagine, Lord. For instance, in your case, just because you haven't mastered the piano yet, doesn't mean an important part of your destiny is not in music. We are using some things now in this season that are imperative to me. But later, front and center will be the piano and your voice. If I hadn't told you this, you might be tempted to forget about the many, many promises you and Ezekiel have had about ministering in music. But I am reminding you so that you will cling to those in your heart, even as Mary kept things hidden in her heart, and yet be able to move forward in the present time with tasks unrelated to that mission. Everything has a time and a season, and what I am reminding all of you here is that heaven is just the beginning. Understand that you have lived a few short years on this earth, perhaps 80 or 90. In heaven you will live for eternity. You will see those who are thousands of years old and still fulfilling the desires of their hearts and the very essence of what they were created to do. I want you to grasp this, lest you are lied to, and told there is nothing more for you in heaven but puffy white clouds and worship. No, worship takes many, many forms, including the arts, building, creating, exploring. Oh, there is no end to life in heaven, and things you never imagined will be done in heaven. All for my glory and the glory of the Father and the Spirit. Yes, how exciting! How wonderful the assignments yet to come! Of all the attributes that most prepare you for heaven, charity is the very highest. Charity allows you to sacrifice, work day and night, wait endlessly because your love for souls necessitates it. Brotherly love is what is pumping from my heart, and you who are connected to the vine are drinking in its sweet nectar, and it is indeed preparing you for heaven. As you master brotherly love, your tasks and assignments will become more and more challenging and rewarding. This is one reason I stress it so highly even now. I am preparing you for that time, but you are also my emissaries, turning the hearts of my children from hopelessness and injury to a bright future full of healing and new life. Oh yes, on this earth, love for your brother is the very essence of your mission as a Christian. People can accomplish great things on this earth, be applauded and honored, but if they didn't love, their lives were a complete waste. This is hard to comprehend in your society, but because life everlasting only begins at the falling asleep of your bodies, love is an absolute requirement for the work of heaven. Yet someone who has been bitter all their lives, if they repent in their last hour and turn to me, I will take them. If they refuse to repent and forgive, they have made their own choice, but rest assured I do everything in my power to give them a very last chance, and for your encouragement, I say, many do repent. Little is known or understood about the last years, weeks and days on earth, but rest assured nursing homes and seemingly immobilizing diseases are part of what prepares a soul for their departure. 
things become clear to them, things they never recognized before, and with my love accompanying them, they grow in understanding and wisdom until they are ready. So now, I'm drawing your attention to your approaching departure, and while I want you to continue to serve and go around doing good, just as I did, I want you also to dust off the dreams hidden in your hearts and know that soon you will be accomplishing them. I bless you now with an anointing of grace to strengthen your belief in the good that has yet to come to you.